The following is a transcript between Matthias De Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am, originally produced on June 2nd, 2021, under the constellation of Gemini, in the mental week examining through the throat chakra. Me. A difficult thing to do when people deny what lives inside of us is to speak, to communicate it. I am. Communication is key to Gemini. The planet related to this sign is Mercury, and it had a clear mission, to be a messenger. As we have explained, Mercury gets its name from the word market, and he was a patron of merchants. The merchant traveled along the roads marked out by rock pillars called Herma, which is why in Greece, the god of the merchants was called Hermes. The merchants were travelers and messengers since they carried the news from one town to another and were used by people as a sort of letter carriers. All of these attributes were assimilated to the God of Wisdom, who was given the same task by traveling the roads of heaven to carry messages to the gods of Olympus. Hermes, known in Egypt as Thoth, was the one who taught the wise, who educated the children of Atlantis, the fathers and mothers of civilizations. Me, and one of the most important teachings was the word, I remember. I am, the verb, the word, the truth, was a code that summarized the divine information made matter, the form in which the mind could hear itself, the form that divinity found to be able to express itself. Every sound, song, cry, word, verb, pronoun were divine jewels of consciousness, pearls of awakening. Me. I remember that we had to learn to pronounce words very well because if we did not, we could not manifest. There were sacred and complex words that were considered keys, technologies between heaven and earth, representing the unity between the divine and the mundane. There was a word, Amanen Inunot Yini, which we called the name of God. When we wanted to embody the divine for a long time, we had to renounce our names and pronounce this one. If they ask, Inahe, what is your name? We had to say, Aman Inumat Nuni. The name is the sum of all of the pronouns together. Ama, I, Ne, you are, Nu, she or he is, Mo, we are, Ti, you are, Ni, they are. That is, I am all, but there were words that were forbidden. I am hermetic. Those are the words that contain so much power that they cannot be uttered unless you really know how to hold their vibration. Me. It reminds me of this thing that happened in the movies where there was always some secret spell that is forbidden to say. I am, and rightly so. Just as there are different levels of learning, there are different forms of education. You can't give a five-year-old child problems to solve from an engineering student who has finished his theses at the age of 25. Just as it will take years until instead of DNA, you say deoxyribonucleic acid and maybe many more years until you understand all that this word really implies and you can say it again with another level of consciousness. Me. Like someone who picks up a book at 17 to read it for school and picks it up again at 30 and again at 60, the same book and the same words will allow me to see the many profound things that I had not seen before. I am. For the ancients, words were more than just vibrations generated by the air leaving our lungs and passing through our vocal cords making sound. Words were creative, mobilized to action, and therefore had the capacity to transform. 
Therefore, those who did not see themselves in coherence, who were not ready to understand the power of the word, were denied it until they had proven themselves otherwise in the trials of life. This generated the idea of hermeticism as a way of closing off knowledge to protect it from unconscious and incapable minds. Me, but isn't this counterproductive? I mean, why shut up the knowledge that should be for everyone? Wouldn't there be more consciousness if in the world if everyone could have knowledge? I am. Here we're going to go down a path of understanding. In the first, I will tell you no, that no matter how much you release the knowledge, it will not improve anyone. In the second option, I will tell you that for many, it has been convenient to maintain that silence. Me. We all know the second one, but I'm interested in knowing the first option. I am the internet. Just one word. Me. <clears throat> I am. In the 1960s, the first computer network was activated in California for the transfer of data of information. To begin to grow and to develop as a way of exchanging work between technology department development offices, governments, and universities from where it would begin to massify. There came a time when the number of users generated different servers and all kinds of information began to be uploaded to the net. Human communication experienced one of the most accelerated advances ever experienced in history, even greater than the Atlantean era. For the first time on Earth, a species managed to generate an organic network without hierarchy where data and information of all kinds were uploaded. The ingenuity of individuals around the world implemented improvements in communication systems, creating applications and equipment of greater agility, developing platforms that facilitated the uploading of data to the network. This is how you could begin to experience the explosion of information in the cloud since the 90s, something that grew exponentially since 2010 by hundreds or even thousands of times. Today, humanity has the largest amount of information publicly available, something that not even our parents could have imagined when they were children just 40 years ago. Me, that's true. I am. So what keeps people from being more aware and what keeps them from attaining knowledge? Me, ignorance? I am. No, lack of will. Those who possess the will to seek will find. Today, any doubt can be solved just by entering a search engine on the web. You have explanations of all possible subjects explained in thousands of ways. What makes us not search? Me. We have not been taught to search. We have been taught to receive. Years of education in which we have not entered the internet in the classrooms, in which we have not searched for what we are interested in. I am. The current edu education system continues to ask children to make an effort to read a dictionary when the internet is much faster or to look for information in the library when there is much more interesting information on YouTube. Me. But it's important to go to the library. I am. It was also important to go have your runes read, wasn't it? Me. What do you mean by that? I am. That in history everything changes and believing that we will lose a skill by advancing does not make us worse. It only slows us down. Those who read fortunes in runes and coffee, those who counsel by word of mouth and interpretation, lost their jobs to libraries. And reading books was the way out of a time of uncertainty. The internet is that same change. On one hand, people cling to it thinking that what they experienced as children was better because they knew how to do more things. And on the other hand, 
the new ones have an access to information on the internet that they do not know how to manage and which they cannot access because no one has taught them how since they spent years learning about the indexes of a book. I regret this bucket of cold water in terms of practicality. Me, yes, I understand. We are clinging to previous ways. Now I want to understand that this thing that we are talking about, it explains that all the knowledge is there publicly, but you don't know how to look for it. I am, because you have not asked the question. To learn, you have to ask the question. Without the question, the answer does not appear. If you do not know what you are looking for, you will have not seen it, even if it is in front of you. Do you understand? And if it appears before you without knowing yet how to use it, you are likely to end up hurting someone. Me. Like the atomic bomb. I am. Man's problem is not the atomic bomb, but in his heart. Albert Einstein. Me. That's why many times wise or knowledgeable people prefer to keep quiet so as to not give something so important to, to those who do not know how to handle it. I am application to freedom. Humans always fall into systems of oppression for the simple fact that they do not know how to manage their freedom. This is why they are usually secret hermetic systems or organizations that maintain control, hiding certain data. In order to maintain the status quo, this is point number two. To hide, to keep silent on purpose, for the purpose of power or for the purpose of protection. Like when your parents hide their problems from you so as not to make you feel bad, like when your teachers were to tell you you are still too young to understand this. Me, why keep quiet in order to control or protect? I am others or ourselves. The reason this happens on a large scale is because it is born on a smaller scale inside every human. The fear of death or exile makes humans keep things to themselves secrets to make them different that led them to make mistakes. Sometimes they prefer silence to survive, to protect themselves, and to remain in the group to be accepted. The fear to say what we know comes from thousands of years of being punished for expressing what we are or think, hundreds of civilizations that judge the inner world of people or their own decisions created a psyche that prefers to close itself to risk. From the hermetic fraternities to the child who suffers intimidation at school for being different, bullying. From the Christians who hid from the oppression of Rome to the free thinkers who hid from the Christians. Silence was the key to substance in a world full of judgments. This is why knowledge is often dangerous in the wrong hands, in the hands of those who have not asked the question. This is why the brotherhoods closed their doors to the public to ensure that whoever came to call before them would do so of their own free will. Me, the inner world tries to protect itself from the outer world. How do we go about saying and speaking? I am, two things have to happen the right external context, and the right internal development. Learning to say what we think, what we feel, and what we believe, what we desire, is one of the basis of real freedom for the individual and the most difficult to achieve because of the above mentioned. A human being needs to feel that the environment contains him in that truth and it is only more difficult. Therefore, in order to be able to break up the silence and speak, it is necessary to follow some steps. Me, which one? I am. First of all, to stop denying what is going on inside. Observe yourself and stop running away from the truth as if it were a schizoid illusion. 
to face and to look into the eyes of that truth of that lives inside and recognize it as your own truth, part of your being. Second is to accept it, to be at peace with it. The third step is to identify if the environment is conducive to express it, and if it is not, you need to look for one where you find containment at the time of pronouncing the truth for the first time. A space where you can feel comfortable. Many people commit suicide because of what they have kept quiet, because they cannot see that the world is huge and that there are many environments where they can be who they want to be, where there will be no judgment, and where they can build a home. For a home is not where you come from, but what you build from your freedom. And the final step is the path of the hero, who, having found the truth and discovered the power in it, returns to the point of origin where it all began, so that he can speak his truth firmly without fear of losing, for he has already won it all. Me, I think it is very useful. I am. We keep silent for fear of not being accepted when the only one who must accept oneself is oneself. If you accept yourself, you have no choice but to say who you are because the verb materializes. Now tell me, what are you silent about? Me, some of the things I keep quiet about with others. Some, sometimes I keep quiet about certain things that I'm ashamed of in myself even though I share it with friends. So I simply choose who to keep quiet with and who to talk to. I am, that's protecting the energy. Saying it without fear in certain environments to take care of your energetic development and not lose strength. The word has the power to build when focused. Sometimes shouting to the four winds is not a solution, but a loss because then you do not know how to hold that which you have released. Now tell me, what do you say? Me, I share a lot of me with friends too much, with strangers almost too, although less to take care of my privacy, I usually share a lot. I am, are you afraid of judgment? Me, I used to be, now I'm angry about judgment. I have to work on it. I am learning to say more. I used to keep quiet a lot when something bothered me. I am. For some, the years give them a perspective on the importance of being silent and saying more what they think or feel, while others, the older they get, the more silent and quiet they become for the fear of losing their security. Identify how you live your silences and your verbiage in life what you will keep quiet and what you say in order to understand where your will to be free lies. Me, I become aware today that information is free there for everyone. We must be able to look for it and above all learn how to look for it. Within which I recognize that to be able to do it freely, I must know what things I keep silent and hold in me, denying, and what things I say to be free. I am. Your voice is your creative power. If you seek to create, you must speak. Release your voice. The silences are only useful to meditate on the truths that lie within you to find the right words, to share your truth in harmony with that of others. Me, I am the voice of the Creator, and communication is the key to the cosmos. I am. Speak to me and tell me about your inner universe.